So Paddy Power push themselves as the friendly, funny betting company, but the reality couldn't be further from the truth. So I'm gonna expose it, because in my opinion, Paddy Power are one of the most exploitive and manipulative betting brands out there. So in no particular order, this is five truths that Paddy Power would rather you didn't see. Starting off with truth number one, which is advertising lies, because we've all seen the adverts from Paddy Power where they say things like, loyalty is dead, live for rewards, right? Well, actually that's not the case. This is pure BS. If you sign up for Paddy Power, use your account with them, take the rewards promotions on a consistent basis, it won't be long before you receive an email like this. You see, they don't actually want people who take promotions and even value from their odds, contrary to their advertising. In fact, if you beat Paddy Power's odds, regardless of if you took the promotion or not, you will eventually be state restricted like this on the screen here, essentially banning you from betting with them. And I should add, Paddy Power, one of the fastest firms to do this, a complete contradiction. It appears that rewards appear to be dead along with loyalty. But there's a twist taking us on to the second point because loyalty and rewards aren't dead for some customers. In fact, it's far from it. Just look at this guy, a severely disabled and somewhat vulnerable gambling addict who lost 500,000 pounds to Paddy Power and Ladbrokes. Where were his staking restrictions? When The Guardian asked, Paddy Power declined to comment. Now this is not the first time that Paddy Power have been accused of encouraging somebody to bet well beyond their means, as these two articles in the newspaper show here. The first being about a wealthy businessman who was lured in by Paddy Power with a £20,000 match bet bonus. I'll let that sink in for a second, and then showered with hospitality to keep him betting. It says that they knew from their own internal monitoring that he had an unhealthy and unsustainable gambling problem. And when they asked him to provide his source of wealth information, he wasn't able to provide an adequate amount, although they let him carry on betting, which is a stark contrast to ordinary customers that sign up, deposit £20, and then have to go through weeks worth of checks if they're betting at value prices. The judge concluded that Paddy Power simply did not care. Which is probably unsurprising for regular viewers of this channel. Now, if you've had an experience with Paddy Power like this, they've dragged out those checks, it's been for a far lower amount, then make sure you leave the details in the comments down below on this video so that other people that watch this video who are thinking or contemplating about using Paddy Power can see exactly what they're like. The second article is about a guy who was encouraged to carry on betting with Paddy Power even after he'd lost his home, five different jobs, and access to his children. Not quite the happy-go-lucky friends that they portray in their advertising, are they really? In fact, they're nothing like it, as truth number three exposes here, where they routinely hide behind their own terms and conditions just to extract more money from the customer. A prime example being last weekend, where they didn't pay out for a shot that was clearly on target, blaming Opta for that. If you want to see it for yourself, then see the previous upload on this channel, because it was so clear to me and everybody else who has seen it with their own two eyes that that was clearly a shot on target. Regardless of what Opta said, all of the betting companies could clearly see this themselves and have done the right thing. But they chose not to, pocketing money in the process. Now when they're probed by newspapers, Paddy Power routinely hide behind the terms and legal framework saying things like no comment or it was a business decision. Now business decision comes up a lot of the time in customer chats, you may have seen some online where they close customers accounts disallow them those bonuses that we mentioned back in point one, but really this is just slimy behavior. Playing the usual games, playing the system, using document checks when it comes to withdrawal and people wanting to get their hands on their winnings. A common trend that seems to be acceptable from the Gambling Commission amongst multiple providers online this year, which makes you wonder, why would high profile names want to have their face attached to the Paddy Power brand? Taking us on to point number four, and hang in there because number five is exceptionally bad. Now the answer is simple, money of course, lots of it. You might have seen public figures such as Peter Crouch, Ruby Walsh, Roger Giggs, Lydia Hislop, Jamie Redknapp, Matt Chapman, Eric Cantona, and many, many more as the face of Paddy Power. The reason they do this, of course, is to leverage your trust and faith in those people for their branding. Now, I wanna be clear here, 
these people are absolute sellouts, particularly those that are linked to the horse racing industry, because they know how bad and how toxic companies like Paddy Power are and how they are behaving. But of course, Paddy Power pays well, which is why they tolerate it. I find this particularly frustrating whilst people are complaining that the horse racing industry is dying, for example. I mean, how can you complain about it whilst endorsing and promoting the very companies that are doing it, whilst taking their dirty money? So let's move on swiftly to point number five because point number five is by far the worst and probably the most sickening of all of the points about Paddy Power which is of course their controversial marketing around sensitive issues. Now if you use Paddy Power the joke is almost certainly on you because their odds are truly atrocious and this company is lower than a snake's belly. They've got no issues with making marketing campaigns around other people's misfortune, such as the Oscar Pistorius trial with the murder of Rita Steenkamp, uh, the colour of Floyd Mayweather's skin. How they got away with that, I don't know. Let alone setting up shop outside a football stadium and encouraging football fans to come and have a photo with um, a group of actors dressed as uh, disabled people and people from other ethnic minority backgrounds. Not to mention their jokes about Tiger Woods car crash, saying a woman's place is in the house, or that time they featured a wheelchair with the words, you'll never walk alone. Can you imagine the boardroom ideas that didn't make it into the public domain? But this shocking behavior isn't in isolation, as I reveal in this video here, where Coral clearly break regulators' rules to hold on to customers' winnings, and also another below it about William Hill abusing their position when one of you guys had the cheek to win after depositing just 10 pounds. It's truly unbelievable.